and through the Speed Pass Plus app. Bit of a windy one this morning out here on Toledo Bend, as you can see. The, the lake's a little bit frothy. Nothing like a good frothy morning in November. Back it on down the ramp. Oh, back it on down the ramp. Hey, hey what's up, what's up, what's up? My key's in the truck. I left the key in the truck cap. Can't be doing that. All right, you're good. Let's get this party started, hot. Well everybody, if you are new to the channel, my name is Tyler Anderson. My goal today is to teach you guys how to catch more fish as always, but to show you guys how much fun college fishing is. So welcome to Toledo Bend. So many bluegill popping. I can hear them. They just can't not be bad for me. I know. If they're not actually feeding, they've gotta be somewhere close. So the situation we found ourselves in right now is that we've worked our way all the way back in the pocket that's kind of where we caught our fish last year in last year's tournament. A different time of the year, but similar situation. Bass moving from shallow to deep, or deep to shallow. And so, this area back here with pads, with hydrilla, it should be money, especially here in the fall time. And then we hear bluegill literally all over the place, popping, which means they are eating stuff off the surface. Or gasping for air, I don't know what they're doing. They're doing something. And they're everywhere, and so, it's a literal buffet for bass. They should be here. And this little popping frog should be getting them. So if we cannot get any bites, then we have to slow down and try something different. Or just completely move out of this area a little bit deeper and find out if those bass are kind of staged on the wood, maybe in the creek channel, until they feed up or move up to feed on these bluegills. But it would be awful nice if they were just on on the gills already, on the frog pattern. Got him? Big in? Hey, look, it's a oh, fish. Hey, that's okay. Look at that. We pulled out the chatterbait. Garrison got one. Nice repad. Oh, uh, yeah. We grabbed up that pad point right there. All right. Whew, one clue down, folks. A little two and a half. Two and a half pounder. We'll take him. Not a bad fish. Okay, well, now we know that there are bass here, or at least there's one so far. If we get a second bite, that's a clue that we're doing something correct. And yeah, they might just not be on top today. Yeah, they might not be eating top water. Got him? Yep, got him. Big one. Not too big, probably, probably four. I got him stuck in the pad though. He's still on there. No, we don't use nets in practice, you dingus, unless they're big. Oh shoot, we got a boat coming. All right, we gotta pretend like I don't have a fish. Pretend like I don't have one. Pretend like I don't have one, crap. Oh, he's not even that big. I thought he was much bigger than that. He's little. Are you gonna whack it on something? See you, bud. All right, there are fish here. To be caught. Dang it, that fish seemed a lot bigger when he hit. A lot bigger. No. He seemed much larger. There he is. Ah, we're done. We're done. Not very big as well. Two pounds maybe. Keeper though, but not the size we need. But we also don't need to be here anymore. Is this a Cinco? No. See you, bud. All right. Yeah, if we need limit fish, we know where to come. Let's ski daddle. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I've got a fish. I've currently got a fish on my line. We have a boat that just pulled up next to us. So I'm just gonna fight it in like I don't. He's not big, definitely small. Little guy on the jerk bait. If I could unhook him, great, that'd be awesome. A little guy on the jerk bait. See you, bud. So, something funny just happened. I made a cast with my flipping rod that has not a whole lot of line on it, and I cast all the line right off. 
So now we're taking the line that I found on the top of the water. Just gonna spool it back through, tie the knot in the reel, and then reel it in. All right. Good deal. And just like that, I didn't lose a $5 flipping bait. Just got me some grass. Well, it's about the time of day for a... Oh crap, that was close. <laughs> I tried to set the camera up on the uh, on the seat and it fell off. That was dumb. Garrison's got one, look at that. As I'm doing my mid-afternoon update. Big one? Little one? Hey, a little bit bigger than the one that I had. Oh shoot, that ain't a bad fish. That ain't a bad fish at all, that's two pounds. Actually, I don't know. That's a good quality fish though. On the what? On the plopper? Yep. Give me the pliers. All right, first eat fish today. Oh yeah. So I was, I was just, I was just actually about to make a point about we have this awesome spot that we just found, but haven't had a chance to figure out what they're biting on besides the jerk bait that I just caught a fish on. And then Garrison picks up the plopper. The sun comes out and we catch one. And that's probably our one of our better fish of the day. I know Garrison lost one a little bit, a little bit bigger than that earlier. But I kind of failed to mention, if you are new to my channel, this is Tyler's Real Fishing. Of course, I love teaching you guys about how to catch more bass. But I also fish collegiately in the Collegiate Bass Tour for Texas A&M University. It's an awesome school in Central East Texas. And uh, we're out here on Toledo Bend, one of the best lakes in the world, ranked number one on Bassmaster for, I believe, two or three years in a row. So, so if you missed the last Toledo Bend video or tournament series, I have a whole playlist of tournament videos. It'll be linked up here in the corner for you guys to watch. But this is the practice. So we have two days of practice to figure out how we're going to catch our fish in the tournament. And I'd say this practice is going slightly better than, than previous, you know, practices we've had. I think we've only had one practice where we really like, you know, smoked them. And it wasn't even big fish. It was just a, a good fun practice at Lake Texoma. So we'll see you guys when we catch more fish. Hopefully teach you guys a little bit more about how to pattern things. But right now we're fishing a mixture of, of kind of past spots we've hit uh, in tournaments and just fun fishing that I think are going to work for the fall time as well. And then also some brand new spots like this one. Never been here before. We saw that it had some wood, had cattails. There's rarely any places on this lake that have cattails. And we get here and it has awesome thick hydrilla. So we're feeling good and we'll let you guys know later on. Hello, wind. Got him? Oh, hey! Well, hey, look at that! <laughs> Were you popping it out of grass? <laughs> and that definitely wasn't grass. <laughs> Just a wee little guy. It's not the kind you want, but you know what? It's not a bad sign to see. Make like a ski and get the dew out of here. Oh! <laughs> LOL. Can your girls got one? Look at that! We, uh, we tried a new area here that literally has nothing to do with grass. It is just a good looking, stumpy clay bank. And Garrison got a fish while I am untying myself here. There we go. Again, we're just trying to push our comfort zone here because we spent so much time on this lake. And by, by so much, I mean like five days on <laughs> grassy areas. That you know what? Second foot. There's so much good stuff on this lake. You can't tell me there's no bass in here. I mean, look at this, it looks beautiful. So we'll, we'll keep you updated. Bold. Whew. We just, uh, we have one of the bumpiest rides that I've had in a while. There was about five, four to five foot rollers on the main lake and it was bumpy. Old Lady Pearl was, was rocking in her shoes here. So we're actually gonna call it a day. It is 5.06, so. We've had, a, we've had a long day of, of pre-fishing. We're good to go. So yeah, I'm a little bit soggy right now. My sweatshirt's kind of wet. My jacket though, AFCO rain jacket, kept me nice and dry on a run that I did not anticipate being wet whatsoever. Definitely some big waves came up, but now I gotta get my electronics off the boat. This is the, uh, the TH Marine Kong mount, and it says Kong because it's literally built like King Kong. It does not let your electronics move no matter how big the waves are. So I gotta get electronics off, put all the rods away, and then we're gonna head probably to the country club to do some homework or back to the cabin to make some dinner. Haven't decided yet, but we'll see y'all there. Oh, 
Wow, look who's awoken from his slumber. slumber. It's G Money. <laughs> you tired? Yeah. It's hard to think that's how tired I am. He's tired from all that bass catching today. I'm gonna respool a reel right now because I realized today I'm actually pretty low on the whole, you know, Texas rig really soft plastic thing. So I plan just to flip and punch. Flip, punch, and throw a frog. And that kind of worked today. And honestly, we kind of could have done a whole lot more of the whole frog thing. But I have a hyper mag here with nothing on it. So I'm going to put some 15 pound fluoro. Get to going. Get to doing it. Get to, get to everything. Yes, ma'am. So what I'm doing here, boys and girls, is just getting a new reel ready for a different rod. I'm tying my 15 pound main fluorocarbon line to a backing, which is a six pound mono. Now there's many different opinions and, and schools of thought on what you should do for your backing on your reels. And I'm a big fan of thin, thin mono because one, it's cheap. You can get like a thousand yards for literally like $8. And so it takes a lot longer to spool the you know backing portion of your reel. But in my opinion, it's best to have the smallest knot possible inside of your spool. That way it can't get caught You know when you get a backlash or whatever. I've had issues, especially when you're not as big, with it hurting your thumb if you have not a whole lot of line left on your reel. So I like the thinnest, um, most compact you know, possible backing material. And so that's what I do, six pound line to 15 pound. Wouldn't that be nice? So we've had our, uh, our roommates, our guests joining us. We have Connor and Carter. Howdy, folks. Howdy, howdy. They're the ones that showed up last year's Slato tournament with zero practice and qualified. So they're uh, they're actually doing one day of practice this year, which probably means they're going to win um, if, if they're going by that logic. But we're going to probably re-tackle, or at least we're going to watch Connor rig his tackle for a while. And then you go to bed, and we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning, everybody. It is day two of practice. We just woke up. It's about 6. What time is it? 6.30 in the morning. Just made some bomb breakfast, some muffins. And now we're going to head outside the boat. It's about to get dark, though, so we'll see you guys at the lake. Hace frío, amigos y amigas. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day for a neighbor. Won't you be mine? Who won't you be mine? Gotta give her some fuel. Power pull down. A little bit colder this morning, eh? Get out the yeah, there we go. Get out the blopper. We only got ten rods on the deck. That's it. Ah, that's fall fishing though. Only ten. Come springtime, boy. 18 drop shots. So the goal this morning for day two of practice out here on Toledo Bend is of course to find more areas uh, that are consistent, you know, fish catching areas. Now it didn't make any sense today. Whatever, I'll still put it in there. But we had planned to spend day two up north, the northern end of the lake, but our confidence is down here. We also have areas of fish down here. And so kind of a little pre-fishing tip for you. If you only have one or two days, it's best that you pick one area and really pick it apart. Though sure that we know a ton of stuff about the areas down south here, uh, but I feel like we could even, you know, dissect them even more to find out more areas and because we have some keeper fish areas down here it's also I think smart practice that we find more areas close that way it doesn't require a long run between spots so we're gonna spend day two down south here again and I uh, will see you guys when we catch some fish hey que paso? <laughs> no way <laughs> hey donde esta las pescas? <laughs> That's a fish. Got a two pounder. Never got a hook in it. That was weird. You see him though? Yeah, I saw him whenever you came up. Yeah. It's weird. I like grass. So, what y'all missed off camera is me catching, really had one hooked on the swim jig about a two pounder, and then caught a one and a half pounder on the swim jig as well. So we are just really exploring all sorts of new areas around our main areas where we catch fish. But we see a whole bunch of boats back there. We haven't really had any signs yet that show us this is a spot to stick with. So we're just gonna keep covering water. I'm gonna hop to another creek at some point and try that out. I wish I could tell you guys more details so far, but it's been a slow day. Oh, 
I pressed the. I slipped this here. We're good. That was close. I just hit the trolling motor on my arm. But luckily, thanks to AFCO's dope cold weather gear, my hand is still intact. What? No, it just got me right here. No. I mean, it's just plastic. Shop AFCO, link 10% in the description. All right, so here is the current situation. We have just put the boat back on the trailer. It is about one o'clock here in the south end of the lake. And we're actually deciding we are gonna go north. I said, I, I told myself this morning, I'm not gonna go north. We're gonna spend the whole day really figuring out this area. But we spent a lot of time in some areas I haven't been in down here and it didn't pan out. I mean, we caught one or two keepers, had one on, they got off. And really, I'm not feeling too confident about this area besides the few areas that we have found. Uh, but this whole general area of the south, not too confident in. And I don't think it's going to help us a whole lot by spending three or four more hours down here. So we're actually going to head up north end of the lake, basically launch where our cabin is, and hopefully try some areas above the bridge. And we'll see you guys at the other end of the lake. Yep, yeah, these lakes always confuse me. This grass has no edge. It's just clumpy all over, all over the place. A little afternoon update for you guys. We have tried some grass up north, and now we're trying some wood, kind of stumpy, you know, more flat bank areas here up north. Just trying everything. We are trying to exhaust our options. These fish today, I think, with the bluebird skies, just kind of shut down. And the cold front wasn't really that severe. It just dropped, you know, five to six degrees. So it wasn't really that cold this morning, and now it's actually hotter than it was yesterday. So I think the high pressure might be doing something to them. We don't know. We are trying to figure out this bite because tomorrow's weather is supposed to be similar to today. So if that's the case, we need to figure out how to catch these fish today. Well, everyone, we are back at the ramp. Time to load up. It's been a uh, interesting day. So practice is officially over. We are back here at the cabin. And to be honest, it was a tough practice. We only caught, you know, four or five keepers on the first day, and then we only caught three keepers today. And of course, we could have stayed in these areas and probably milked them and caught fish, but that's not the point of practice. The point of practice is to find fish that way you can catch those in the tournament. And I think this slight cold front we have, or the, the high pressure, whatever it is, the weather change, kind of threw these fish for a loop. And so from hearing from other guys as well today, you can kind of tell by the speed and uh, swiftness that competitors are fishing around you as to whether or not there's fish. And so we saw guys all over these spots that usually if they have fish in them, you see them get there, catch one or two and leave and go somewhere else. And we saw guys sitting in places for, you know, an hour or two hours like we did. So that probably means that guys are also struggling to catch fish. I know that our roommates, Connor and Carter, that showed up last night, they had a tough time today as well. And to my knowledge, they only had three keepers when we called them. And so it's definitely a tougher time period, but I hope you guys were able to learn something from this, whether it was fishing related, how to fish tournaments, uh, you know, skills, tips and tricks, that kind of stuff. I want to teach you guys everything that I know because I've been doing this a while. I mean, this is my third year of college fishing. I, do, I did how many years? Three years of high school fishing as well, and I love it. It is a, a fun challenge. Now, of course, I love making challenge videos where I put, you know, sneaking whopper ploppers together. Those are fun as well. But I love testing my skills, becoming a better angler on big lakes like Toledo Bend and this FLW Regional. So, with that said, I say we go over some of the gear real quick that I was able to use to catch this, these fish. Now, one of my favorite ways to catch fish on Toledo Bend is the jerk bait. Really, any lake that has shallow grass is a jerk bait. And uh, I think this is an Academy brand jerk bait. I've got it on the Lose BB1 Pro with the custom red handles on there. Uh, some 12 pound or 15, 15 pound fluorocarbon, and then the square bill crankbait rod by Lose. I know they have a jerk bill rod as well, uh, jerk bait rod, but I actually prefer to throw it on the square bill crankbait rod. Has a lot of nice action right there. Let's see, what else did I have? This is the rod and reel that I've been throwing the frog on lately. Uh, it is the Lose Pro TI, the new $350 reel. This thing is incredible. I've loved using this thing. Cast like a dream and it feels like a brick in your hand. Like this thing is super, super strong. And I've got it on the Magnum Pitch and Stick, which is a 7.4 heavy. Not exactly recommended for a frog. Definitely a bit too stiff uh, for walking the dog effectively, but it's, it's worked out fine for me. I was kind of limited on, I wouldn't say limited on rod selection. I have plenty of rods. But I didn't uh, didn't just choose the right rod for the frog. So the last rod that I used, and I'm hopefully using a little more tomorrow, is my swim jig rod. This is the Custom Speed Stick Spinnerbait Rod. It is a 6.9 medium heavy, I believe. 6.10 medium heavy. Uh, just makes for a lot more accurate casting to up shallow targets. And then I have the Hyper Mag with 15 pound line as well. So 
it seems that a 50 pound, 15 pound, or 65 pound line is the way to go right now. And of course, all this stuff will be linked down in the description below. I hope you understood why I chose these lures at this time because of the bluegill that the bass were feeding on yesterday and the shad they were feeding on today. And hopefully, we can go win that tournament tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the next episode of Tyler's Real Fishing Tournament Series.